And so one of the things people always ask is like, yeah, but how's that going to help my relationship for me to be happy? And what overwhelm says, overwhelm brain will whisper in your ear or fear-based thinking will whisper in your ear and say, if you change, you know that your marriage might fall apart. You know that maybe he isn't going to come with you. And your biggest fear of divorce is going to happen. And this is such a self-limiting thought. Think about how evil that is, that thought. It's such a self-limiting thought. It's saying stay unhappy. It's the only way to stay safe is to stay unhappy. I've gotten a question a couple times this week, more than a couple actually, people reaching out, inquiring about whether or not I could help them with their marriage to bring harmony to their relationship, to end the, the bickering, the conflict, um, and just help people restore that sense of, of being on a team, that sense of being respected, having their needs met. And, and usually when I have a call with someone like this, it's kind of one of two things going on in the marriage. In one case, often people are feeling really disconnected, disconnected to their partners, feeling um, just uh, not seen, not heard, um, kind of in avoidance patterns trying to like find a way through the dissatisfaction by detaching um, or just, you know, you might think of it as going through the motions, just going through the motions. So if that, um, if that resonates for you, that's, that's kind of one common thing that happens after we have kids in marriage where people aren't really nurturing the relationship or each other. The other thing that I hear a lot about is conflict, bickering, resentment, conflict. This is more holding toxic anger in the body. Uh, you may feel tired and drained when you're around your partner. You may feel undermined. There could be power struggles, any of those things. So, so I mostly hear about those two things. And, and, and there are other profiles too, but that's probably two of the most common things that I hear about. And, and in either scenario, there's a big drain on your energy. Um, oftentimes you may not see it, but the partner, once I get into conversation, really hearing and assessing what's going on, I can tell the partner feels the same way. Partner's feeling not seen, not heard or appreciated, not valued. And that's often what we're feeling. So if I could say one helpful thing about this, it would be think of your, your partnership or your spouse as a mirror. So what they're giving you and showing you is probably a lot very close to uh, what you're feeling inside. And the true, same is true for your children. So there's a little shortcut for you, <laughs> psychology hack. Um, so if you look at that marriage, that relationship and its challenges as a mirror, what can you learn about what you're feeling inside, about the way you're feeling? And, and one really positive trend that I will say is I speak with a lot of people from all over the country, all over the world. And, and of late, I'm hearing more and more women who have been following this content, following here, getting my emails for many years now, following the videos. And they're saying like, I get it now. The light just came on and I get it now. Or I listen to your masterclass and it really clicks for me that it's me and my happiness that's going to change things for me, that it's not waiting for my partner to change or for a light to come on for him or her, but it's, it's me taking ownership over my life and taking ownership over my desires and my dreams and standing for those and fighting if need be for those, um, investing in me. And, and until I do that, there won't be a shift in my level of happiness, fulfillment, joy, satisfaction, because it is virtually impossible that someone else can gift you your own happiness. That's between you and yourself. It's between you and God. That's for you to create. That's for me to create for me. If I was waiting on my kids to please me or my husband to um, meet my emotional needs, you know, good luck with that. So, and I have a great husband. I'm just saying, like, let's be real about that. If we're wanting other people to, to give us a sense of fulfillment or happiness, it will be short-lived. It will be an illusion anyway. Um, we will be gravely disappointed. Not because we've chosen disappointment, disappointing people in our lives, but, um, and you may be feeling that way. Maybe that resonates. It's probably not all the other person, spoiler alert, there's stuff going on in you that's 
um, unmet, unresolved, unrealized, um, unclaimed. So on a spiritual path, that is something to recognize in yourself. So if you're either one of those two types of sort of dissatisfaction in your in your relationship, if, if you're in that conflict avoidance cycle or you're in that disconnect mode, then uh, the place to look, where's the place to look, you guys? You know it. It's in the mirror. And to look in the mirror means asking yourself, in what ways are you getting in the way of your own happiness? In what ways are you undervaluing yourself? In what ways are you not paying attention to or taking seriously your emotional needs, your psychological needs, maybe your physical needs? Until we wake up and realize that it's not anyone else's responsibility to make us happy. Until that happens, we probably aren't going to stop making it our business, our responsibility to make everyone else happy around us. And that also cannot lead to fulfillment. It leads to depletion, emptiness, resentment, frustration, poverty mindset, all the things. Ick, all the things. And so one of the things people always ask is like, yeah, but how's that going to help my relationship for me to be happy? And what overwhelm says, overwhelm brain will whisper in your ear or fear-based thinking will whisper in your ear and say, if you change, you know that your marriage might fall apart. You know that maybe he isn't going to come with you. And your biggest fear of divorce is going to happen. And this is such a self-limiting thought. Think about how evil that is, that thought. It's such a self-limiting thought. It's saying stay unhappy. It's the only way to stay safe is to stay unhappy. And it's not that our brains want to sabotage us, but we let them all the time. We just go, oh yeah, that's right. I better not do me because if I start to do me, then what that means is probably things are going to fall apart. That my my uh, partner who doesn't understand that I have needs too is going to... Uh, fall apart or act out or whatever. Um, hold anger toward me and I'm scared of people being mad at me. These are all really young emotions, you guys, all the stuff. This is part of what we heal in awakened motherhood. But um, to, to, to answer the question of how does it, how's that going to work? How am I spoke to someone this week? You know, how's that going to work that for me to get happy is going to transform my relationship, my marriage? The answer really is that if you do nothing, nothing changes. If you do nothing, if you change nothing, you already know what you're going to get. What you don't know is what you're going to get when you create your own happiness. And one of two things happens, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just spill it right here so you know, so all of you can hear this. The reality is when you start to create your own happiness, you're more fulfilled. You're, I can speak for my clients in, in our work together. Um, there's a steady calm they learn to create. Um, these moms are, are empowered to notice their needs, to take care of their needs, um, more loving, more in their hearts, more, more, um, compassionate. So this is the outcome of our work together. When that happens and you're more in harmony with, with ease, with, um, enjoying your life, you're like a warm sun that comes on. You're like a warm sunshine and, and your, your people that are orbiting you are feeling that light. They're feeling that warmth. They're coming into your light. They're wanting some of that. They're wanting it for themselves. Okay, so one of two things happens to a partner. When one partner evolves, when one partner elevates and expands into their true nature, their true essence, their power, their, their love, their heart. Either, A, the partner kind of watches and observes and... Uh, doesn't understand, doesn't um, kind of uh, just just learns, just watches and learns, and does not start to change right away. Uh, rather, stays within himself. I'll say it's a guy. Stays within himself, observing your change, and staying within his own patterns and programs that he's always had running but without you holding them with him, will choose to bang around in those a little longer and continue on in his own suffering. So the difference there is instead of co-created suffering, 
There is individually created happiness in you and individually created suffering in him. Got it? I'm really super simplifying this. The other option is you do transformational work to create joy for yourself and happiness and fulfillment. You're no longer in overwhelm. You're no longer resentful. You've dropped the anger. There's no more conflict. There's no more fighting. You're super connected. You're connected to yourself. You're connected to your children. You're being really present. You're able to, um, to live in the here and now and enjoy life as it is. And your partner sees that. And your partner gets really curious. And some vibrational juju magical stuff starts happening in the relationship. And before you know it, your partner is doing bizarre things that maybe he hasn't done before or in decades. Like tell you you look beautiful or bring you flowers or say, what can I do for you? Or to say things like my clients report all the time. My gosh, you just seem so different. You just seem different. Something's different about you. Or they say nothing and they just kind of want to get closer to you. Just kind of want to be in your warm sunlight. Right? That's what happens, you guys. And this is the norm. So, so again, one of two things happens. When you shift and up-level yourself, when you let go of needing to fix the partner, needing to change the partner, the partner needing to fix you, when you just let go of that stuff, just burn the boats, I'm doing me. I'm stepping into my own happiness. I'm going to be a creator of my own happiness in my own life. One of two things happens. Again, to recap, one, your partner quietly watches on or pretends to not notice, doesn't like it that you're changing because your partner doesn't like change and he likes to have his way on everything and maybe he's super stubborn and strong-willed and, and Aries like my husband, in which case maybe... When you drop the patterns that you're co-creating, he hangs on to them a little longer. Maybe he gets mad within himself that he isn't as happy as you are. Maybe he prolongs his own suffering. But you know the difference is there? It doesn't matter for you because you're happy either way. And your kids are in your light. It really, like, it really is not the hell you imagine it would be, it is heaven because you're happy either way. And that's the gift. And people don't get this gift in therapy. Sorry to all the therapists in the group. But I mean, it's, I've never, I've never had anyone reach out who said like someone taught me how to do this in therapy. You stepping into your light means you get to have your, you get to be in your light. Okay. So, so either he then you stop co-creating problems with him in conflict and that's over. And then he continues to perpetuate it within himself. The gift there is, it's so clear to everyone <laughs> who's creating that. And you're no longer creating that. And you know how you know? Because you're happy. And it feels so good to be happy. And it hurts to see someone you care about, the father of your children, suffering. And so you learn when you're in compassion, you learn to feel compassion for that. You learn to feel empathy for that, but to not apologize for it. You learn to not try to fix it, not take responsibility for it. It just is. It becomes a thing. It's just a thing. Got it? And then the other option B that happens is your partner sees you in this warmth and in this light and is like, wow, what's happening? And I want some of that. And either wants to be close to you, wants to learn what you're learning, wants to go on his own journey of, of personal development, um, of transformation, of self-improvement. And, and I've seen all those things happen. And, you know, if I was had to break it down, if you were going to ask me, well, like, but which happens more of the time? I'd say it's probably like 80, 90% where the partner changes for the better. We're learning how to create such a sense of harmony within ourselves that it becomes a norm in our relationships. And that's the beauty here. So if you're wondering, how do I do that? And you're beating yourself up because you've tried and you've read a book and it didn't work. Like just, just erase that idea that you could do it alone. It's total nonsense. It's total nonsense. We cannot, we cannot create the kind of up leveling that is required to have motherhood feel easy and fulfilling and connected. We cannot create that alone in a vacuum. If you are taking all this in and you're saying, oh my gosh, yes, 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 this is so great. I'm going to put all these things into practice and you try it and you think, oh my God, I need help. <laughs> then just reach out. Just reach out. I'm so happy to have a call with you. Connect. Um, email me. You can message me here. Um, you can also just go straight to um, grab a spot on my calendar 
and we'll chat about what's going on with you and find out if I can help you to have what you're wanting. And and sometimes what we find out is the problem that you're going through is not one that I can help you solve. And then in that case, I'll steer you in another direction. But to get on my calendar, it's www.honorjanetsky.com forward slash call. I'd be happy to connect with you. And uh, please do leave me some comments. Let me know what's your experience of this. Are you struggling with any of these things? What's your relationship pattern? Let me know. And, uh, and do reach out if you want to connect.